An entire civilization just disappears without a trace, vanishes into thin air? It's easily the most surprising and most shocking conclusion you can imagine. Have you ever wondered who were the first people to walk the Earth? It appears that it's quite difficult to exactly decide which was the first civilization, but most historians agree that the title belongs to the Sumer civilization. Sumerian tablets are probably one of the oldest uh, form of written record that we have. For more than 2,000 years, Sumerian culture flourished and was the dominant power in Mesopotamia. Across the region that is now southern Iraq, powerful city-states emerged. Towering ziggurats rose, sweeping epics were told, and golden jewelry adorned the rich and powerful. Dominance and control would shift among its glorious cities as the years rolled by. The civilization reached its peak in the late 3rd millennium BC and then gradually fell away. Sumerian civilization and its achievements would be forgotten for millennia until archaeologists began exploring the region in earnest in the 19th and 20th centuries. Glorious finds in the area revealed the richness and complexity of this ancient culture and allowed scholars to see how Sumerian influences cascaded through the civilizations that followed it. Join us as we embark on a journey through time to explore the fascinating world of lost ancient civilizations, shedding light on their achievements, cultural contributions, and enduring impact on the continent and beyond. The ancient Sumerians created one of humanity's first great civilizations. Their homeland in Mesopotamia, called Sumer, emerged roughly 6,000 years ago along the floodplains between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in present-day Iraq and Syria. The Sumerians learned to farm on a grand scale in the so-called Fertile Crescent, a thin, crescent-shaped sliver of Mesopotamia often tied to the dawn of farming, writing, mathematics, and astronomy. And while the arid, ancient landscapes of the Middle East may not seem like the most likely location for an agricultural breakthrough, Sumer actually had a massive advantage. By settling between two large rivers, the Sumerians benefited from rich floodplain soil and ample water to irrigate crops. Their success was accelerated by Sumerian technological innovations like canals and plows. With time, Sumer got so good at growing food that they started to have enough resources left over to focus on building the cities and temples. Roughly 10,000 years ago, villages started popping up across Mesopotamia. The people who lived in the region raised animals and grew grains, even as they continued to hunt and gather. Over time, those villages expanded, and their people became increasingly dependent on farming. Archaeologists still aren't sure exactly what life was like for these early cultures. However, similarities in pottery styles and stamp seals placed on a variety of containers suggests some level of administrative control emerged between 6,000 and 7,000 years ago. Meanwhile, people started constructing a series of temples using mud bricks at a site called Eridu. The city seems to have been founded around 5400 BC, and it was occupied for thousands of years until it was finally abandoned for good around 600 BC. Eridu's status was legendary even in ancient times. Babylonians actually believed that Eridu was the oldest city on earth, having been created by the gods themselves. That kind of reverence attracted modern researchers too. Even before archaeologists discovered Eridu, they had read about its existence in ancient texts. After kinship had descended from heaven, Eridu became the seat of kingship. One Sumerian tablet reads, the area around Eridu was excavated a handful of times between the mid-19th century and the mid-20th century, turning up the remains of a once sprawling metropolis that saw successive buildings constructed on the remains of temples and other structures that had come before. Those digs did confirm Eridu as a real and truly ancient metropolis. At around 7,400 years old, Eridu is among humanity's oldest cities, but nowhere near the oldest. The current favorite contender for Earth's first city is Satal Helyuk, which sat just north of the commonly accepted edge of the Fertile Crescent in modern-day Turkey. 
Satal Hayuk was founded 9,600 years ago and also survived for millennia, disappearing just centuries before Eridu was founded. However, Eridu was just the beginning of Sumer. The civilization quickly grew to include dozens of cities. By 3500 BC, Sumer had grown into a collection of city-states linked by linguistic and religious traditions. Among the most significant were Eridu, Uruk, Ur, Larsa, Isin, Adab, Lagash, Nippur, and Kish. Over time, some of them grew more powerful than others, and for brief periods, one city-state might rule the others until it fell from power. The Bible mentions Sumerian cities and rulers. The beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Erech, and Akkad, all of them in the land of Shinar. From that land, he went into Assyria and built Nineveh, Rehobothur, Kala, and Resen, between Nineveh and Kala. That is the great city, Genesis 10, 10, 12. These cities were ruled by kings whose names might have been forgotten were it not for the discovery of the Sumerian king list. Copies of the list have been found on 16 different clay tablets or cylinders found across Mesopotamia. The most complete one features the names of prominent cities, their rulers, and how long they ruled. Scholars are quick to point out that the Sumerian king list blends legend and history with the earliest kings enjoying excessively long reigns and the more recent having human-sized lengths of time on the throne. As Sumerian cities exploded in size, Sumer emerged as one of the world's first great agricultural societies. In time, Eridu would fade in influence and Uruk would take on an outsized role. Called Erek in the Bible, Uruk was founded by King Enmerkar around 4500 BC. At its peak, the very first city-state to rise to prominence numbered some 40,000 inhabitants, a huge population that drove significant economic development. The city's wealth was reflected in its monumental architecture. Uruk's ziggurat, dedicated to the Sumerian sky god Anu, was completed by the late 4th millennium BC, topped with its white temple. Its soaring form, resplendent in sunshine, would have soared high many centuries before Egypt's Great Pyramid. Excavations in the 20th century by German archaeologists revealed Uruk's richness, with evidence of large-scale gold, silver, and copper working. Other massive structures were uncovered, including smaller brick temples and a defensive wall. Archaeologists recovered troves of clay tablets as well as works of art. Scholars continued to piece together Sumerian history as other cities were excavated. In Lagash, a sophisticated irrigation and sluice system was found. The most famous discoveries were found by the British Museum's Leonard Woolley and the University of Pennsylvania. They uncovered Ur, a city that peaked in the late 3rd millennium BC. Woolley's digs of the 1920s and 30s excavated Ur's 80-foot-tall ziggurat dedicated to the moon god Nana. Woolley also discovered the city's royal cemetery from the mid-3rd millennium BC. These tombs held crowns, necklaces, and the exquisite box known as the Standard of Ur, inlaid with jeweled mosaics depicting scenes of war and booty. The tombs also contain the remains of royal servants sacrificed to continue serving their sovereigns beyond the grave. What's notable is Sumer's gifts to humanity are immeasurable. The word Sumer comes from Shumerum, which was what the Akkadians, Sumer's neighbors to the north, called the inhabitants of this area. The ancient Sumerians called themselves Salmat Kakadi, meaning blackheads. Innovation was one of the key factors in the Sumerians' efforts to turn the desert into an oasis. And one of their most beneficial innovations was also among the simplest, the plow. The first plow appeared about 3500 BC. And by 1500 BC, the Sumerians had also invented a cedar plow, which let farmers use beasts of burden to till and plant at the same time. The devices even came with instructions, courtesy of the Sumerian Farmer's Almanac, which told farmers how to boost their crop yields thanks to tilling and irrigation. All the efficiencies helped support a growing population, as well as a growing system of rulers and religion. And as their cities grew, 
So did their efforts in writing, math, and religion. Don't you know that many of the things we take for granted today were invented in ancient Sumer? Even, for example, a thing as fundamental as time. Many ancient civilizations had a rough approximation of the passage of time. Obviously, a day began when the sun rose and night began when the sun set. Somewhat less obvious was the passage of weeks, months, and years. However, these too had been approximated by ancient peoples. A month was the length of time of one complete lunar cycle, whereas a week was the length of time for one phase of the lunar cycle. A year could be estimated based on the changing seasons and relative position of the sun. Once the zenith of the sun was determined, scholars could count the number of sunrises, sunsets, that passed until it reached its zenith again. In this manner, the ancient Egyptians, Mayans, and Babylonians, among others, determined that the year had 360 days. But it was the Sumerian astronomers and mathematicians who first systematically divided the passage of time. They divided the day from the night by time by increments of 60 second minutes and 60 minute hours, which made up 12 hours of night and the 12 hours of the day. In the biblical book of Genesis chapter 1, it states that God divided the night from the day and saw that it was good. If one accepts God's role in creating day and night, then the Sumerians finished the job and, if one does not, it was not God who divided night and day. It was the Sumerians. Sumer's agricultural successes also led to a need for a methodical system of recording information. Sumerian merchants needed reliable ways to track their businesses. Somewhere around 3500 BC, merchants began using soft clay tablets impressed with small symbols to keep track of their goods. These pictorial symbols evolved by 3200 BC into a complex series of signs of about 600 characters known as Sumerian script. Writing had been born. Resembling little wedges and lines, Sumerian writing was created by pressing a reed into wet clay tablets. This technique gave the system its modern name of cuneiform, from the Latin word for wedge. Sumerian script sparked a revolution. Other language groups found across Mesopotamia adopted it. Cuneiform tablets have been found in multiple Sumerian archaeological sites. Commerce was one way cuneiform spread, but scholars believe that conquest was another. Sumerian cities conquering each other expedited cultural exchanges. For instance, Ianatum of Lagash brought not only much of Sumer under his control in around 2500 BC, but also areas of Elam to the east. Ironically, however, the durability of Sumerian literary culture and the use of the cuneiform system, which later spread throughout the Near East and remained in use until as late as AD 75, owes less to Sumer conquering than its being conquered. In 2330 BC, Sargon of Akkad, identified by some scholars as Nimrod in the Old Testament, toppled Lugalzagesi of Uruk, Sumer's dominant ruler at the time. Uniting Akkad with Sumer as part of his conquest of Mesopotamia, Sargon forged history's first multinational empire. During the Akkadian control of Sumer, Akkadian was the preferred language but it was written in Sumerian cuneiform. This choice helped preserve Sumerian literary texts. Many of them were preserved in copies from the later Old Babylonian period, 2003-1595 BC. Sumerian literature included hymns, magic spells, morality texts, and myths about the gods. Early poems in Sumerian about a king of Uruk called Gilgamesh were later woven into an epic tale a version of which was found in Nineveh in the 19th century. Gilgamesh's quest for immortality has entered the canon of classic literature and been translated into numerous languages across the world. It is hailed as one of the world's earliest heroic epics. The Sumerians' rich written record also preserved evidence of medical advances, including the first prescriptions in history. These texts include a description of the ailment and a suggested remedy. References to poultices, potions, and dousing appear in Sumerian texts. 
Although it has been difficult to identify the ailments with any known conditions, these records suggest that Sumerian pharmacology was advanced. They show knowledge of sophisticated methods for obtaining substances such as powdered alkali, potassium nitrate, and saltpeter for use in their remedies. Following the fall of the Akkadian Empire around 2150 BC, Sumer was overrun by a people from the eastern highlands known as the Gutians. Sumerian kings regained control around the 21st century BC in a period historians call the Third Dynasty of Ur. Its founder, Ur-Namu, was a great general, reformer, and innovator. He is credited with building the great ziggurat of Ur, but perhaps his greatest achievement was creating the world's first legal code. The reconstructed text, based on fragmentary copies found in the 20th century AD, begins with an account of how Ur-Namu established justice, reforming the system of weights and measures and ensuring that orphans and widows were not prey to the powerful. Ur-Namu's code influenced later Mesopotamian legal systems, most notably the Code of Hammurabi, the Babylonian king who reigned three centuries later. The revival of Sumerian power under the third dynasty of Ur was short-lived. Ur was conquered by the Elamites, who captured its last king around 2004 BC. The city's destruction was commemorated in the Lament for Ur. Similar Mesopotamian works have been discovered, and scholars liken the Lament for Ur to the Book of Lamentations in the Bible. The goddess Ningal weeps for her city in the lines of the stirring work, which scholars have pieced together from different cuneiform tablets. Dead men, not potsherds, covered the approaches. The walls were gaping, the high gates, the roads were piled with dead. The Elamite sacking of Ur effectively ended Sumerian power, and the Sumerian language would soon be extinct. Sumeria's mighty cities and its world-changing texts lay hidden until their triumphant re-emergence nearly 4,000 years later. A lost civilization was found again, one that planted the seeds of human civilization itself. In addition, it's worth noting that Sumerian religion made an impact, at least to some degree, on the entire ancient world of the Near East and the Mediterranean. In Mesopotamia itself, the Sumerian pantheon and belief system were adopted by ancient Sumer's successors, as well as most of its neighbors. Sumerians envisaged their earthly world as a dome on a disk surrounded by water. Their underworld, Kur, was thought to be a geographical place beyond the Zagros Mountains to the northeast of Mesopotamia. Similar to Hades, it was a gloomy, dismal land that souls departed to after death. The Sumerians had some notion of heaven or a land of paradise beyond the earth plane, but it was reserved solely for the gods. The nature of their gods reflected that of the landscape and environment of the time. Mercurial at best, cruel at worst. While the ancient Egyptians attempted to enlist the gods in their service, the Sumerians sought simply to appease them. The role of the gods was to create a natural order out of nothingness and chaos and the role of man was to ensure the satisfaction of the gods to keep the chaos from re-emerging. Enki, god of wisdom and water, was believed to be the creator of the human race. He was worshipped at the sacred city of Eridu, which was thought to be the oldest in the world during ancient times. Although Uruk, the sanctuary of his daughter Inanna, actually predates it. Inanna, goddess of love, sex, fertility, Justice, war, and politics is the progenitor of the Aphrodite prototype. She was known for her trickery, like when she traveled to her father's city to get him drunk and steal the meh which had been bestowed upon him, also spelled me. This mythological tablet had decrees of civilization inscribed on it by the most supreme gods. Highest among the supreme deities was Enlil, god of air and wind. His consort Ninlil was also among those ranks as goddess of the southerly wind. Interestingly, one clay tablet discovered at Eridu, as well as others found elsewhere in Sumer, also tells a flood story about a deluge that mirrors the one found in the Bible's Old Testament. 
Biblical historians call it the Eridu Genesis story. According to the tablets, it was the gods who first told humans to take up living in cities in Sumer. But eventually, the gods decided to wipe out the human race with a deluge. According to the myth, one particular god, Enki, tipped off a Sumerian king named Ziusudra that he should build a boat to save his people. The idea that the flood story would have been passed down from the Sumerians makes sense for other reasons too. In modern times, Sumer has captivated everyone from archaeologists to ancient alien conspiracy theorists. But the fascination with Sumerian society goes back much further in human history. Both the Babylonian and Assyrian empires, which rose to control parts of the Middle East as Sumer faded away, continued using the Sumerian language in their religious rituals for millennia. Excavations of Babylonian homes have uncovered tablets inscribed with the Sumerian language from long after the civilization itself was gone. And the Babylonians, who created the first star maps, seem to have inherited some of their knowledge of astronomy from the Sumerians as well. The Babylonian people had two sets of constellations, one for tracking farming dates and another to recognize the gods. The latter was passed on to us today thanks to the Greeks and formed the foundations for the 12 zodiac constellations. And the star names that they used seem to date back to the Sumerian people, implying this ancient civilization had a seriously sophisticated knowledge of much more than the earth below their feet. So while the Sumerians may have disappeared thousands of years ago, their influence and intrigue has continued on into the present, shaping aspects of modern society we all take for granted today. Besides Sumer civilization, ancient African civilizations also unveiled a lot of marvels of the past. From the awe-inspiring pyramids of Egypt to the enigmatic ruins of Great Zimbabwe, the continent boasts a treasure trove of architectural wonders, cultural legacies, and historical significance. When we think of ancient African civilizations, it is hard not to conjure images of the majestic pyramids of Giza, the enigmatic Sphinx, and the Nile River winding through the desert sands. Ancient Egypt, often referred to as the gift of the Nile, emerged as one of the most influential and enduring civilizations in history. The success of ancient Egyptian civilization came partly from its ability to adapt to the conditions of the Nile River Valley for agriculture. The predictable flooding and controlled irrigation of the fertile valley produced surplus crops, which supported a more dense population and social development and culture. With resources to spare, the administration sponsored mineral exploitation of the valley and surrounding desert regions. The early development of an independent writing system the organization of collective construction and agricultural projects, trade with surrounding regions, and a military intended to assert Egyptian dominance. Motivating and organizing these activities was a bureaucracy of elite scribes, religious leaders, and administrators under the control of a pharaoh who ensured the cooperation and unity of the Egyptian people in the context of an elaborate system of religious beliefs. The ancient Egyptians excelled in various fields, including architecture, engineering, medicine, and agriculture. The pyramids, colossal temples, and intricately carved tombs stand as lasting testaments to their mastery of monumental construction. The Great Pyramid of Giza, built for Pharaoh Khufu, remains one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, showcasing the incredible engineering prowess of its builders. The tool that made this possible a unique and fascinating number system, Egyptian numerals. The Egyptians had a hieroglyphic numeral system, which, unlike our current digits, was quite pictorial. A stroke represented one, a heel bone symbolized 10, and so on, with separate hieroglyphs for one, 10, a hundred, a thousand, 10,000, 100,000, and a million. It's almost as if each numeral were a character in an ancient story, each with its own distinctive role and personality. But why should we care about these ancient numbers today? Well, the Egyptian system, with its base 10 structure, is not entirely alien to us. 
it shares a common ancestor with our own decimal system. Moreover, it's a testament to human ingenuity. How the Egyptians managed to solve complex problems without the modern numerals we take for granted. In their world, mathematics was omnipresent from surveying flooded farmlands to astronomical calculations that predicted the annual flooding of the Nile, essential for their agriculture. These numeral hieroglyphs were more than just symbols. They were tools for survival, for prosperity, and for the eternal legacy of the pharaohs. As you marvel at this system, it's crucial to remember that the Egyptians were practical mathematicians. They may not have had the concept of zero or place value as we know it, but their numerals served them well in their architectural marvels and day-to-day -day transactions. It's a beautiful reminder that mathematics is not just about numbers. It's about how we use them to shape the world around us. The Egyptians also made significant advancements in the field of medicine. The Edwin Smith Papyrus, dating back to the 16th century BCE, contains detailed descriptions of surgical techniques, demonstrating their understanding of anatomy and medical practices. Moreover, the ancient Egyptians developed a complex religious and funerary system with beliefs centered around the afterlife, elaborate burial rituals, mummification practices, and the construction of massive tombs reflected their belief in the preservation of the body and the soul's journey to the realm of the dead. Ancient Egypt has left a lasting legacy. Its art and architecture were widely copied, and its antiquities were carried off to far corners of the world. Its monumental ruins have inspired the imaginations of travelers and writers for millennia. A newfound respect for antiquities and excavations in the early modern period by Europeans and Egyptians has led to the scientific investigation of Egyptian civilization and a greater appreciation of its cultural legacy. Next, let's shift the attention to Kingdom of Kush, a powerful African empire. In present-day Sudan, the Kingdom of Kush flourished as a powerful civilization from around 800 BCE to 350 CE. Situated at the crossroads of trade routes connecting Africa with the Mediterranean world, the Kushites thrived through commerce, cultural exchange, and military might. The Kingdom of Kush left behind a remarkable architectural legacy, most notably in the city of Meroe. The royal city of Meroe, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, boasts the remains of royal pyramids, temples, and a vibrant urban center. The Meroitic pyramids, smaller in size but equally captivating as their Egyptian counterparts, stand as a testament to the cultural syncretism and artistic ingenuity of the Kushites. Furthermore, the Kingdom of Kush played a crucial role in the diffusion of Egyptian culture and religious beliefs into the African interior. The Nubian pharaohs of Kush adopted aspects of Egyptian civilization, including deities, hieroglyphic writing, and architectural styles. This cultural exchange contributed to the development of a unique Nubian-Egyptian hybrid culture, leaving an indelible mark on the history of the region. Another notable ancient civilization is the Kingdom of Aksum, an African trading hub. Situated in present-day Ethiopia and Eritrea, the Kingdom of Aksum emerged as a prosperous trading hub and a formidable maritime power. Flourishing from around the 1st century CE to the 8th century CE, Aksum controlled key trade routes, connecting the African interior with the Red Sea and the Mediterranean. The Aksumites excelled in trade, utilizing their strategic location to amass wealth and establish commercial networks that spanned across continents. They traded precious goods, such as ivory, gold, spices, and exotic animals. Aksum's control over the trade in goods, including frankincense and myrrh, granted them significant economic influence and political power. The kingdom also witnessed the rise of Christianity, becoming one of the first nations to adopt the faith. King Azana, in the 4th century CE, embraced Christianity, making Aksum one of the earliest Christian states in the world. The Church of St. Mary of Zion, believed to house the Ark of the Covenant, became a significant center of religious pilgrimage and worship. The last one is Great Zimbabwe, 
a monumental stone city. Moving southward, we encounter the awe-inspiring ruins of Great Zimbabwe, a city that thrived from the 11th to the 15th century CE in present-day Zimbabwe. Great Zimbabwe served as the capital of a kingdom that controlled a vast territory and engaged in trade with civilizations along the Swahili coast and the Indian Ocean. The most remarkable feature of Great Zimbabwe is its monumental stone walls built without the use of mortar. These impressive structures, such as the Great Enclosure and the Hill Complex, attest to the advanced architectural and engineering skills of the builders. The city's layout, with its distinct areas for residences, religious ceremonies, and royal functions, provides insights into the social and political organization of the kingdom. Great Zimbabwe's wealth was derived from trade in gold, ivory, and exotic goods, which were exchanged with merchants from the Indian Ocean trade networks. The city's decline remains a subject of scholarly debate, but its legacy endures, representing a symbol of African heritage and national pride. While these ancient civilizations thrived independently, it is important to acknowledge the interconnectedness of African cultures and the impact they had beyond their own borders. Trade routes, cultural diffusion, and migration facilitated the exchange of ideas, beliefs, and technological innovations, enriching the tapestry of African history. For instance, the Trans-Saharan trade routes connected West Africa with North Africa and the Mediterranean world, facilitating the exchange of goods such as gold, salt, ivory, and slaves. This network of trade and cultural interaction contributed to the development of prosperous empires such as the Ghana Empire, Mali Empire, and Songhai Empire, and fostered the growth of Islamic influence in West Africa. Moreover, the Swahili coast of East Africa emerged as a vibrant region of trade and cultural exchange, connecting the African interior with the Indian Ocean world. City-states like Kilwa, Sofala, and Mombasa thrived as centers of commerce, attracting merchants from Arabia, Persia, India, and China. This cross-cultural exchange led to the blending of African, Arab, and Asian cultures, resulting in the development of Swahili language, art, architecture, and cuisine. The ancient African civilizations discussed above offer just a glimpse into the vast array of achievements, cultural richness, and historical significance that the continent possesses. From the enduring legacy of ancient Egypt, to the architectural wonders of great Zimbabwe, Africa's ancient civilizations continue to captivate and inspire awe, reminding us of the immense contributions and ingenuity of African peoples throughout history. These civilizations not only left behind architectural marvels, but also contributed to advancements in fields such as medicine, trade, and cultural exchange. They serve as a testament to Africa's deep-rooted history, diverse cultural heritage, and enduring legacy, shaping the continent's identity and influencing the development of civilizations around the world. By exploring and appreciating the achievements of these ancient African civilizations, we gain a deeper understanding of the continent's rich tapestry, paving the way for a greater appreciation of Africa's past, present, and the limitless possibilities that lie ahead. That's all the information that we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. And be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. As always, thanks for watching and we will see you next time.